Welcome to volume zero of our Grasshopper tutorial series. So through this volume, we're going to introduce you to the basics of the Grasshopper interface, show you how to make um, some of your first parametric models, and uh, help you be comfortable um, connecting different nodes in Grasshopper. So let's jump right in. To begin, launch Rhino 6 or 7. I have Rhino 6 open here on the left side of my screen. And then to launch Grasshopper, you either click this little Grasshopper button or type Grasshopper directly into the command prompt. And once you do that, you should see this uh, screen, which is Grasshopper, um, open. I have it off to the right. And for the beginning of this tutorial, I'm actually going to maximize it so that we're looking just at it. So brief introduction to what, um, how, what Grasshopper is here. So we call this the canvas. So Grasshopper works by uh, dragging and dropping different nodes, which are like little commands, from your toolbar up here. So you see that I have many different tabs, and each one of these little icons is a different command, just like the uh, commands and icons you would have in Rhino. Basically the same thing. Only this time, when you drop them into the canvas, they turn into little tiny modules or components. And the way Grasshopper works is by feeding information into these components, and they will take, uh, and they're all set up the same basic way, where there are inputs on the left, and they spit out an output on the right. So in this little parametric model here, we're just doing a very simple addition component where I have two numbers in and it's spitting out an output. So as I change, say, parameter one, you see that output automatically adjusts. And notice I called these parameters. And that is the essence of a parametric model. Parametric models are based on input parameters. And it's all set up so that as if I change uh, something at the front of my script here, the information will flow through all the nodes and all the logic that I set up in my code to change the output. We're showing you this basic example of uh, numbers, but it obviously also works for geometry. So in order to build your own models, um, you can find your components up here in these uh, tabs. You can double click in the canvas, you get this search bar. So if I wanted to say find that addition component, I could type in addition and it will bring up some. Um, you may notice that you might not see the same components that I have up here. Well, one thing you should do, if you go to View, make sure this Obscure Components is toggled. Notice how a whole bunch of them disappeared as soon as I click that. This is very useful, especially when you're learning Grasshopper, because you'll be able to um, find a lot of the more obscure components. It'll help you learn what commands are available. So let's take a look at what types of commands are available in Grasshopper. So in short, basically anything you can do in Rhino, you can pretty much do in Grasshopper. Um, but I like to describe Grasshopper as a combination of AutoCAD and Excel, because you have the ability to model and manipulate geometry like you would in AutoCAD, but you also have the ability to manipulate data like you would in Excel. So just in a quick overview, and these are a very small sample of what's available in your toolbar, um, you have the ability to create geometry. So if you look at some of these components here, you see uh, they all follow the same setup of inputs on the left, outputs on the right. So in this case, I am creating a point from three coordinates, a line from two points, or maybe a surface from two curves or two lines. Right. So there's all different kinds of ways that you can generate geometry. You can also then have a, a series of components for manipulating geometry, whether that's, say, dividing a curve into equal length segments based on the, say, a number of segment counts. Um, I can project geometry onto a plane. I can cut uh, different shapes with slicers, that kind of thing. Um, anything you can do in Rhino, you can pretty much do in Grasshopper. And then what's very interesting, and I think really drives a lot of the power of Grasshopper, is this ability to analyze geometry. And this could be as simple as, say, getting the length of a curve. Um, or as kind of complex as identifying whether or not a curve or a point is within a curve. Uh, I can also uh, find, say, the nearest point on a surface. There's all these things that we can do to uh, test our geometry, get information or get data out of our geometry. And that's then powerful, because once we have data from our geometry, well, now we can leverage all the math components. Uh, and th these, you know, everything from adding, subtracting, we have trig, we have, you know, any, any kind of math function you want, uh, you can find a way of getting that here into Grasshopper, which means that we have the ability to now um, not only get information from our geometry, but also then drive our geometry with different functions. And this leads to a new way of modeling that you really can't do as easily in other platforms. So you might have um, noticed that your 
components might look a little bit different than mine. Uh, so if you go to this display tab, if you toggle on or off draw icons, you will see that you can change it to be the uh, full name if you want to see those written out. I think for learning it's useful to have the icons on because then you can compare them to say the corresponding um, icon in your toolbar. And in order to see the inputs and outputs in these long form, if you go to display draw full names, you'll see you can have the, a shortened version, which is how I typically have it turned on. But if you're trying to learn the components the first time, I encourage you to keep draw full names on. Okay. Um, so let's go through the toolbar, give you a quick overview of the types of things and where you might be able to find them. Um, because as you begin, you may struggle to find the commands you're looking for simply through the search bar. And once again, double click on the canvas, you can get that search bar uh, pulled up. So um, you should probably only have a few uh, tabs at the top. Notice I have a million different letters. Well, most of these are plugins uh, that give me very special um, commands and modules from packages that you can download. At the end of this tutorial, we'll show you how to download some of those. So don't worry if you don't see all these. Uh, but starting from the far left, we're going to go through some of the default tabs that we have. So the params tab gives you access to your very basic fundamental components. Uh, we have all the different geometry types. We have all the different primitive types. So everything from integers and numbers and text. Uh, this Boolean here is a true false uh, container. And that's, you would use that for example, is the point in the curve true or false? So that's the kind of output you would get from those sort of components. Um, I'm not going to go through all these, don't worry. There are too many for us to cover. Uh, so those are more the fundamentals. As you get to this Maths tab, uh, as expected, you have all of your math functions. We're going to skip sets for now. This will be covered in more detail in Volume 1 as we get into lists and data tree structures. And this is really a very powerful part of Grasshopper, uh, a little bit more advanced. The Vector tab is uh, where you can create all of your points, vectors, and planes. This is the simplest form of geometry. Then moving up to the curve tab, this is where you have all of your lines and curves. And here I want to point out a few things. So um, I intentionally created these three groups of saying you create geometry, you manipulate, and you analyze geometry. And you'll find that a lot of the tabs in the toolbar are set up around similar um, methods. So for example, under the curve tab, if I look at the primitive, this here contains a bunch of con uh, constructing nodes. These are all different ways of generating lines and arcs. Same with this spline uh, command here. A lot of different ways of generating or creating the geometry. Whereas this utility tab are all a bunch of tools for manipulating curves. Now you can imagine if I had one utility tab for every type of geometry, I'd have a million things. So the toolbar is pretty nice because it starts to organize things based on the thing you're trying to adjust. So if I know I'm dealing with curves, I should probably, and I'm looking for a command to do something I want, a good place to start is to go up to the curve tab. If I want to create it, maybe I'm going to look at the primitive tab. If I want to manipulate it, I'll go to the utility tab. For example, I could explode it, join it, flip it, that kind of thing. And if I want to analyze it to pull information out of the curve, that's what this analysis tab here is for. Right, so here you'll see that everything from pulling out the component parts, such as the endpoints or the control points of a curve, all the way to testing information about that curve. Like, is it a closed curve? Is it planar? Um, what's the length that we went through before? Or there's that point in curve command. So if you're trying to drag information out of your geometry, the analysis tab has that. And you'll notice that the same basic approach follows through with the other geometry types. So going here to surface, you'll see that we have um, same approach, the ability to create, the ability to manipulate under the utility tab, and again, this analysis tab for pulling information out. And I want to point out um, with surfaces, you'll start to see this B rep happen all the time. So a B rep is a boundary representation. This is what Grasshopper calls solids. Uh, and it's NURBS geometry. Uh, and you can think of B reps as a collection of surfaces or solid geometry. So all things surfaces and B reps are found in this tab. And surface types and NURBS geometry it contrasts strongly with this next tab, meshes. So if you think of uh, NURBS surfaces as being very smooth, uh, that's quite computationally intensive. It gives you a lot of uh, powerful capabilities, um, a lot of uh, very useful um, components involved with NURBS geometry. But sometimes you may want to do things in a more simple form. 
And so a mesh is simply defined by its vertices, its edges, and planar um, surfaces in between them, or planar mesh. And uh, depending on what you're working on, this might really be the best uh, form. But it's a fundamentally different geometry type, and so it has a completely different set of tools and commands associated with it. And you'll often find that um, the all the components meant for meshes simply will not work on uh, geometry that is uh, surface or BREP based. And then these other tabs here, we have a variety of intersection commands, a variety of transform uh, commands under this transform tab. So from morphing or um, moving objects. And then under display, you have a variety of components that help you uh, tag and preview and visualize what you're working on. Okay. So that's a quick overview of the types of components that we have. Let's talk about the actual components themselves. So I've avoided the fact that a lot of these are orange. So what's going on with um, these colored boxes? So I'm going to explain this over here. So there are three fundamental colors you'll get. If it's gray-ish, that means things are working fine. And we'll get into the variety of gray colors in a minute. Um, if it's orange, that's a warning. That doesn't mean it's broken. It just means it's missing something or something's off. So in order to understand what's wrong, if you hover your mouse over this balloon, you'll see that it gives you your um, error messages or your, sorry, your warning messages in the case of the orange. And this is saying that the input parameter failed to collect data. It means that it's empty. There's nothing plugged into it. So it's putting out a warning saying, hey, something's off. I'm not producing anything. I can't work. Uh, and that's different from the red. So red is bad. That means there's an error and something is wrong. And if I click on this, say, so well, what happened? Um, this warning error, uh, warning message, is related to curve B, because that's empty. That's not a problem. But here, this is what's giving me the red error. Data conversion failed from point to curve. And you'll notice here that I plugged in this point command into my curve input. Now, this component expects two lines or two curves, and it's not able to operate on a point. I put the wrong data type in, so it breaks. And if you're curious which com uh, what data types components need to try to avoid some of these errors, all you have to do is hover over the uh, inputs. Now make sure you're not hovering over the middle. All these components are split into three parts, the inputs on the left, outputs on the right, and then the component itself in the middle. So depending on which section you hover over, it can give you information about it. So here, uh, notice it says um, it describes uh, what it is. Uh, it might give you a description. Uh, each component might have everything from one line to maybe a paragraph of information. And uh, a key thing here is notice that uh, curvy looking object in the hexagon. Well, if you go over to the param tab and you look at all the different basic geometry types, uh, curve is represented by that squiggly line, that spiral. So it's very useful, I would say, to memorize all the major uh, parameter types because it'll give you hints as to what the component is expecting. So here it says it's expecting a point, and you'll notice that that is the symbol for what a point is. And obviously it's expecting a curve and I gave it a point, and that is what's causing my error. 